We humans have come a long way, traveling our world in search of new lands, spreading to every corner of the globe. But the time has come to look to new destinations, to go once more into the unknown. This is the story of our journey in space. We will fly to the stars on a ship that sails on sunlight. We'll explore the most distant edges of the cosmos by taking a roller coaster ride through the very fabric of our universe. and will discover the machine that has charted the heavens as never before. It's the voyage of a lifetime, a voyage to our future in space. We've always had the urge to explore. Our ancestors journeyed into the unknown to discover new lands, and now it's time to do it again. But this time, it's not a voyage between continents. This time, it's a voyage to the stars. As our telescopes get ever more powerful, they have shown us a universe of unimaginable beauty and power. Vast clouds where new stars are born. Strange galaxies. Even tantalizing hints of new worlds. But they've also shown dangers. Disasters so huge they could destroy the Earth in seconds. Space is full of terrors and wonders. But will we ever see them for ourselves? We have a God. It's less than 50 years since we took our first steps out into space. Since then, thousands of rockets carrying hundreds of people have made the 10-minute flight into orbit. Astronaut Story Musgrave is one of a new breed of space adventurers. When you see a launch from the outside, it's a rather glorious, magnificent thing. Inside, it's the absolute opposite of that. It's 137 decibels. It's shaking. Everything is shaking. You have the solid rocket boosters that are really pounding the vehicle and all. And then you have the turbulence in the atmosphere that adds another shake, rattle, and roll. And so you're basically in a small closet here with belts and straps and helmets and gloves and parachutes, survival gear, and you got all of this. It is all over you, and at the same time, you're being shook. And it can't help but pass through your mind. You just want the whole stack to hold together.
You're along for the ride and you want to survive that. So it's not a joy ride for me. It's what I need to go through to get into the incredible serenity and the celestial dance of, of zero gravity. Hello, Houston. We are inspired. We are ready. Let's go fix this thing. We are becoming a race of spacefarers. It's a strange and unfamiliar world. But for the privileged few who go there, it is an experience they can never forget. Spacewalking is much more like a dance than anything else. You choreograph every move. You choreograph every finger, every toe, every body position, and how you're going to do all of that. It's just as precise as a ballet. Going into space, it's opening night at the ballet. During a spacewalk, I love to look at my feet. You see your boots going 18,000 miles an hour, 25,000 feet per second. You see your boots going down the road. <laughs> if you ever want to play Superman, uh, that's where to do it. We stand on the edge of space. Our most ambitious project is testament to what we have achieved, the International Space Station Freedom. but it's surprisingly close to home. It's floating less than 400 kilometers above our heads. The furthest we've traveled into space is this. In 1969, we set foot on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. For the first time ever, we looked back at our home from the surface of another world. It's amazing to think that people have actually walked up there. The trouble is, it may have been a giant leap for us, but in the vastness of space, it really was just one small step. Although we humans haven't reached any further than the moon, our robot ambassadors are already reaching for the stars. Where we cannot go, we have sent machines. This is the Voyager probe. Nothing we've ever created has traveled so far from Earth. It's now left our solar system on its way to the stars. Look at how far it's gone. Voyager left Earth in 1976. It passed Jupiter, then Saturn, and now it has left all the planets far behind. After decades in space, it's 14 billion kilometers from Earth. It's an impressive journey, until you consider this. On this scale, the nearest star to our solar system is way over there. In fact, it's over 100 kilometers away. To reach it would take Voyager another 25,000 years. At Voyager's speed, even reaching the nearest star is an impossible journey. But perhaps there's hope. It's easy to forget that in a single person's lifetime, we've gone from this to this. And in our quest to reach the stars, some scientists believe the answer could be to go from this to this, Deep Space One. Its secret is a new kind of engine, the iron drive, and it's the passion of NASA scientist Mark Raymond. The idea for iron propulsion has been around since long before I was born. 
But the first time I ever heard of it was in a Star Trek episode. They're using ion propulsion. And Spock says, configuration unidentified, ion propulsion, high velocity, unique technology. And I thought, well, this is really amazing, but I'm never going to see anything like that in my lifetime. But in 1998, Mark Raymond's dream became reality. Deep Space One. But what is it that makes the ion drive so different? Compare it with the conventional rocket. The rocket fuel burns with tremendous force, and as it thrusts down, it pushes the rocket up. In the laboratory, Mark Raymond watches a prototype iron drive in action. Instead of tons of rocket fuel, the engine uses a few grams of a gas. It gives the gas an electric charge and spits it out atom by atom at incredible speeds, creating a seemingly gentle blue haze. The iron drive doesn't have the raw power of a rocket. It has something better, staying power. It's a bit like the hare and the tortoise. Conventional rocket engines create huge thrust and awesome acceleration. But they burn through their entire fuel supply in just a few minutes. After that, it's all over. The iron drive is nowhere near as powerful. In fact, it would take Deep Space One four days to get from naught to 60. But the reason Deep Space One is the fastest spacecraft ever is because it's been accelerating for almost two years. When we communicate with that spacecraft out so far in the solar system, to think that our baby is out there, this little spacecraft that we built, I just, I think it's really amazing. Iron Drive spacecraft will be fast enough to chase down comets or travel around the planets of our solar system in just a few months. But even Iron Drives don't last forever. Eventually, they too will run out of fuel. To travel further to reach the stars, we'll need something new. And it may be based on one of the oldest technologies we know, the sail. Long ago, the limitless power of the wind carried our ancestors to new worlds. In the future, we may use the same idea to travel to the stars. on sails that catch nothing more than sunlight. A solar sail, using only the light from our sun.